Hello there, my name's Scott, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the V3 50 Cal, which I received from www.v3tronics.com. Before I start, though, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review, but my opinion of why that remains true on its network as always. Okay, let's go straight ahead and show in a bit more detail. Okay, so here I have the V3 Tronics V3 50 Cal V1. So V3 Tronics is the name of the manufacturer. V3 50 cal is the name of the actual device and V1 is for version 1. Now I've had this for a couple of months now and during that time period I have actually brought out a version 2. So the version 2 will have a few sort of uh, slight differences compared to what I'm showing you here and I will try and explain what those are as we progress. Now I believe the uh, the V3 50 cal is available in a few different sort of uh, package options and I'm not too sure exactly what package they sent out to me but what I'm going to do now is just show you exactly what they included. Right, so as well as the actual V3 50 cal device, I also sent out one of these uh, sort of soft carrying pouches, a user manual, five of these beauty rings, an EFEST 1100 milliamp power 18500 battery, a mini Nova, and a 18500 extension tube. Okay, so the V3 50 cal is mainly made out of 303 grade stainless steel with the exception of a bit of brass down here, a brass mouthpiece which has then been gold plated and inside you're going to find copper contacts. Build quality is excellent, all the parts screw together really nice and smoothly, very good quality threading and if you look very carefully you can just about see a faint line here and that's because this isn't one solid piece of metal, it's actually two parts joined together. But once it's all screwed in position it's almost a seamless join there and I say almost because you can just about see the faint line now. One thing that did let down the uh, overall build quality though was the mouthpiece. Uh, the very first time I went to use it, I pulled the mouthpiece out and the black delving collar that fits around the base just got left behind. And it's because it's been uh, glued on, or it looks like it's been glued on anyway, and unfortunately the uh, glue just wasn't up to the task. Now the V3 can be used in two different modes. You can either have it set up like this, so it looks like a uh, 50 caliber bullet, and um, when you have it set up like this, you're going to use it along with a Mini Nova sort of tank atomizer. Now, I don't believe you're actually just limited to using the Mini Nova. Though on the website, they do have a list of other compatible tanks and atomizers as well. Or if you want to use it as a regular sort of 510 mechanical device, you basically just need to unscrew the bottom half. Okay, so to set it up in the sort of 50 cal mode, these are all the parts that are going to be required. So that is the gold-plated brass mouthpiece, the top section of the body, the mini Nova, the lower section of the body, which also has these sort of regular 510 connection now, a, uh, a brass vanity ring, I suppose you'd call it, and then finally you'd have the switch. On the base of the switch, you can see you have some engraving which says Made in USA, and at the bottom, I believe that is your serial number. You also have a ventilation hole, so if you was very unlucky and had a battery venting gases, and those gases can escape. And on the inside you have a copper contact pin. The uh, tension of the spring uh, for me is pretty much spot on. It's strong enough to prevent it from firing up if you're going to stand it upright on your desk. But it's also sort of loose enough to uh, make it a very nice easy action. Throw of the switch is probably around 4mm. Personally I prefer it to be a little bit shorter. But it is very nice and responsive. I mean, you can press it right on the very edge and it's going to fire up every single time. You also have a locking feature, so at the moment I can press the button in and you can see the copper contact pin is moving up and down. If I want to carry it around in my pocket for example and I need to lock it off, just need to give this a quarter of a turn that way and that's it, it's now locked and the firing pin won't move. Right, so what I'm going to do now then is quickly set it up in the 50 cal mode just to show you how it all goes together. And to start off with then I'm going to take the brass vanity ring and just slide that over the top. I'm going to assume they've made these sort of removable so in the future you could possibly get different sort of coloured bands to uh, customise the way it looks. But as it does come off each time you undo the switch you do have to be a little bit mindful because uh, it is something that you probably could quite easily lose. Now with regards to batteries the V3 50 cal uses an 18350 battery and this is where I started to have a few problems. 
I like to use these AWIMR batteries and I believe the V350K has been designed around the EFES battery which works out probably around sort of one, one and a half millimeters longer than the AWIMRs. So this means when I put the battery in I get a lot of excess battery rattle and it doesn't help that the, uh, the V3 doesn't have an internal battery adjustment to accommodate for different length batteries. However, on the V2 version of the V3, I believe it does have that internal adjustment so you can accommodate different length batteries and get rid of that excessive battery rattle. So I'm going to insert the uh, positive end in first, then take the switch and screw that all the way on. And you can probably hear now rattling around like a good and unfortunately. So the next step, you can just take the, uh, the mini Nova and screw that into the top. Screw it all the way down and then take the second part of the body, slide it over the top, screw that all the way down and then finish it off by taking the uh, the gold plated brass strip tip and whacking that in the end there and that's it, you're all set up and ready to go in the 50 cow mode. But like I said, I personally prefer to use it as a regular sort of 510 mechanical device. So what I'll do is quickly show you that now as well. Now to use the V3 as a regular sort of 510 mechanical device, you just need to get rid of the mini nova the brass mouthpiece and then unscrew the top half of the main body to leave you with the lower half and then from there you just need to grab hold of whatever atomizer you want to use and also one of these beauty rings now they sent me out a stainless steel beauty ring that looks great they sent me out the brass beauty ring again that looks great and they also sent out these three which look a little bit like something that's just come out of a pound shop christmas cracker uh, not my cup of tea at all. I think they look uh, quite tacky. And uh, for me personally, I'm definitely going to stick with the stainless steel on the brass version. Now, when adding the beauty ring, it does go on a specific way round. If you look on this side, you can see the threading goes all the way to the top. If I spin that round, you can see the threading on this side stops around sort of two or three millimeters before the end. And it is this side which goes on first. And it is for a specific reason. And I'll show you that in a second. So it uses a regular 510 atomizer connector, so it's going to be compatible with all your favorite 510 atomizers. And in the center there, you're going to find a copper contact. However, it's not adjustable, so you may have some problems with certain atomizers, especially if those atomizers don't have their own adjustable center pin. All I can say, though, is that every atomizer that I've tried on here has fired up perfectly, no problems whatsoever. So I'm going to be using my uh, Kraken Genesis atomizer, so I'm going to screw that all the way down. As you can hopefully hear, we'll fire up. But what I have, though, is a bloody awful gap. So how can I get rid of that if the uh, the center pin isn't adjustable? What I need to do is just grab hold of the band, screw that up, job done. Okay, so that is the V350 cow. Let's go ahead, see what it vapes like. Okay, so that was the V350 cow. And what I'll do now is go ahead and show you an action. So I'm going to start off using it in the uh, 50 cal mode with the Mini Nova. I'm not too sure what the resistance of the atomizer head is. It's one I've rebuilt myself, but I'm going to take a guess it's probably around 1.8 ohms. The tank has been filled up with some 18 milligram strength tobacco flavoured e-liquid, just a PG e-liquid. And the 18350 battery came off the charger around two minutes ago, so it should still be reading around 4.2 volts. Okay, so I'm going to start off then using it in the 50 cal mode and then I'll switch it over to uh, use it in the regular sort of 510 mechanical device mode along with a nice Jenny. Okay, so this is the V3 50 cal. So as you can see, vapor-wise, getting plenty of vapor. But what you have to bear in mind is that the amount of vapor production, flavor, throw hit you're going to get will be totally down to how you're actually sort of using it and got it set up with regards to what sort of atomizer, cartomizer, um, type of e-liquid, the resistance of the atomizer or the coil, etc., etc. But nevertheless, with the setup I've got here, even with the uh, little mini Nova, still getting plenty of vapor. Okay, I'll start off then talking about the uh, the build quality. It's a excellently machined device. The parts screw together beautifully, nice big thick chunky threads. You know, there's no sort of rough edges, burrs, anything like that. The parts screw together without any uh, sort of noise at all. 
very, very good quality machining, so I can't complain about that at all. One thing that did let it down a little bit though was the uh, the drip tip. When I very first uh, took it out of the bag, I pulled the drip tip out and I was looking at it thinking, how does this actually stay in there? Because it didn't. I just couldn't work out how it's actually meant to grip onto anything. And I'll put it in, turn it upside down and fall straight out. It wasn't until a few minutes later that I realised that uh, there's actually a little black piece inside there which was actually meant to be around the bottom of that uh, drip tip around there. And you can see where it's uh, been glued on and for whatever reason the glue just hasn't, just hasn't done a good job of uh, gripping onto it. You know, it hasn't affected its performance. You know, it does sort of uh, slide back on and, uh, you know, once it's pushed on there, it's going to take quite a bit for it to come off. So I'll say that, you know, it does come off fairly easily. I could have glued it back on, but at the end of the day, um, I just did. <laughs> so, you know, it seems to be working fine without it being glued on, but nevertheless, so it shouldn't have sort of come off so easily like that. So, you know, machining quality wise, you know, excellent, can't really complain at all. The little tiny details with regards to the, uh, the drip tip, you know, did sort of um, tarnish it a little bit though. Now, in the 50 cow mode, you know, it does look great. It looks like what it's meant to be. Are you 50 cow bullet? I've never actually seen a 50 cow bullet in uh, in the flesh or in real life, so I don't know how accurate it actually is. But it's, you know, it looks like a bullet, as far as I can tell, anyway. And um, the the thing with though with me though, because it looks like a bullet, it's very hard to take it seriously, and very hard to sort of view it as anything other than a bit of a novelty item. It doesn't matter how good the machining quality is. You can be made out of titanium, can be made out of anything. And, um, but because it's that sort of shape, it's hard to view it as anything other than a, a bit of a novelty item. And the other thing for me though, is that I've already reviewed, reviewed uh, a 50 cal mod before in the past. So for me, it's nothing new. It's lost that sort of new and excitement sort of feeling to it because it is something I have reviewed in the past. I think the, uh, the original one I reviewed was actually a little bit, well, actually quite a bit, quite a bit bigger than this, but you know, very similar, and obviously it looks pretty much identical as well because of the, uh, the 50 cal design. Um, the things for me improve a great deal though when I switch it over to the sort of regular mechanical device, and I can use atomizers and, uh, and sort of carto tanks, or et cetera, et cetera, which are the things that I'd normally go for over the uh, Mini Novas. There's nothing wrong with the Mini Novas, they perform great, and if you're a beginner, absolutely fantastic, you know, really nice and easy to use, they perform well, you're getting plenty of vapour, flavour and throw hit, and like I so, said, you know, fill it up, just got to unscrew the top, wet your juice in there, put the top back on, job done, you know, so you can't really, uh, can't really moan about those at all, but for me personally, you know, I much prefer to use my sort of Genesis atomizers, uh, the occasional cartomizer tank with a nice sort of rebuildable cartomizer atomizer inside of it, uh, or things like the Ithaca or Ithaca, etc., etc. Um, the other thing I'm not too keen on as well is this uh, is this mouthpiece. Uh, I keep calling it a drip tip, but I suppose it's more of a mouthpiece. You've got no chance of dripping down it. It doesn't feel nice at all. Again, it has that sort of novelty feel about it. You know, don't get me wrong, looks wise, it looks great, but uh, in actual sort of usability terms, it's just, you know, it just doesn't appeal to me in any way, shape or form, unfortunately. Just, uh, just not my cup of tea at all. So what I'm gonna do now then is uh, quickly swap it over to the uh, regular uh, sort of mechanical device. Put them over there. And like I said, no, very nice and quick and easy to do. Just gotta take all those off. Put this uh, collar thing or beauty thing on there. Definitely not one of the ones with all the crystals though, so I'm using the brass one. Whack me a uh, Kraken on there, and then just get rid of that gap. And that's the other thing, I like that, you know, it's very simple to do. You know, you've got a big gap there, so give that a spin, gap gone, job done, and, and it all fires up nicely as well. So now, I think that's a fantastic little device, you know, like my opinion of it has grown tremendously from changing it over from that uh, bullet design. Uh, which for me comes across as more of a novelty item. And now in the little 18350 mode, it looks like a, a decent, good quality, and uh, you know, of a groovy looking uh, mechanical device. So I'm gonna have a nice little toke on me, on me Kraken. <laughs> And you know, no offence to the older uh, little mini Novas, but um, a nicely set up Genesis Atomizer is always going to be, for me anyway, a far nicer vape. 
So in the uh, little 18350 mode, when it comes to battery life, 18350 batteries aren't the, uh, aren't the greatest. If you're a particularly light user, you could probably make one of these batteries last you the full day so quite comfortably. If you're a moderate user like myself, or moderate slash heavy-ish user, you know, you're going to be going through two, maybe three a day. If you're a chain vapor, probably, you know, God knows how many, but, uh, you know, so battery life in the 18350 mode isn't amazing, but it's certainly sort of adequate. It's no uh, sort of big deal to change the battery sort of twice or even three times a day. Uh, the switch works fantastic, no problems there whatsoever. You've got a really cool lock on there. So at the moment, it's all going to fire up. Now it's locked. You know, it's literally. Well, I think in the close-up shots, I said it was quarter of a turn, but it's probably more an eighth of a turn. It hardly takes any sort of effort at all to uh, lock it off. And you know, the lock works perfectly as well. Um, there is quite a lot of throw on there. It's probably around sort of four millimeters at a guess. Uh, for me personally, I do prefer devices where the throw is around sort of one or two millimeters. Um, but you know, nevertheless, it does work perfectly well. Got nice tension on the spring. You can stand it up fine. It won't fire up the atomizer, and um, and uh, the actual tension of the spring makes it nice and easy to uh, to operate as well. So I've got no complaints about the switch at all. Works well. Well, something else I was going to say. Um, I completely forgot what it is now. It's going to really bug me as well because I know as soon as I press the uh, the stop button to finish recording, I think I'll. Oh, Bollocks, that's what I was going to say, but uh, for life, it's just gone completely out of my mind, so I'll have another quick take while I think about it. I've remembered, I'm glad I didn't uh, press the stop button. Now, um, positives and negatives. Uh, for me, negative is the, uh, the bullet mode. It doesn't really do anything for me personally. I know a lot of other people will probably love it, but for me personally, I've seen it before, so it's taken away that little bit of newness about it. And it's very hard to sort of view it as anything other than a bit of a novelty. I certainly won't walk through in the middle of Romford High Street uh, vaping it set up like that. Uh, another negative for me is the, the battery rattle. Um, I really can't stand that at all. However, bear in mind this is the V1 and I believe the V2 now has the, uh, the battery adjustment inside there. So it's probably just a little screw which you undo. Uh, which will then accommodate for different length batteries and get rid of that battery rattle. Uh, the uh, the centre pin not being adjustable, again, I think that has been sorted out in the uh, in the V2 as well. However, I will say that I've probably tried six or seven different sort of atomizers, Genesis atomizers, silica atomizers, you know, mini Novas, etc. And every single one of them has fired up. I've not had any uh, any problems whatsoever where the centre pin of the atomizer isn't in contact with the centre pin of the actual device. So no problems for me personally anyway. Um, positives, it's an extremely well made device and I think it's sort of, I think they've wasted their talent doing it like a bullet, that's just my own personal opinion, I think they should have just concentrated on doing a very high quality mechanical device, I think it uh, certainly suited me more personally and I think uh, over time it probably appealed to a lot more people as well because I'm sure there's going to be some people who are going to be put off by the fact it does look like a bullet probably just as many people who are going to be the complete opposite and love it for the fact that it looks like a bullet, you know, especially the older, the gun nuts in America. Um, other positives for me is uh, in 18350 mode, you know, it's a cracking little device, really nice and small, very sort of pocket friendly, got a fantastic lock on there. It performs great, no problems there whatsoever. Now it is quite versatile. If you like your sort of mini Novas, and you want something a little bit different, you can have it set up with a little mini Nova in there and you've still got a nice sort of high quality mechanical device that's probably going to last you a lifetime. Or if you prefer to have a, just a regular sort of vape with a nice sort of Genesis atomizer, just unscrew the couple of parts and that's it, you know, job done. Now, so there's definitely a positives and negatives. The negatives uh, that I've experienced have been solved on the V2, and really it comes down to the aesthetics of these sort of bullet looks, uh, which uh, don't really sort of float my boat. But uh, the, uh, the other sort of the grumbles that I've got, they do seem to have been addressed in the V2, so I wouldn't really sort of pay too much attention to that anyway, really. But I can only review what I've got in front of me. Anyway, if you do fancy uh, trying one of these out for yourself, go along to www.v3tronics.com. Thank you very much for watching. Also, come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. 
Cheers, guys. Happy vaping. See you later.